Hello and welcome back to section three and we're talking about handling the complex health and social care consultations and um, uh, we're going to hear a little bit more about the clinic that Helen is running um, and after that you're going to hear about the clinic that Tim's running, he's uh, just offline at the moment um, and I'll touch base with you about peer health. I'm Mark Rickenbach and uh, the clinic I'm involved with is peer health in North Somerset. So over to Helen and tell us a bit more about your clinic. Thank you. Hi, I'm Helen Marsden. I'm a GP in, in uh, Manchester in Fallowfield. Um, so my, I haven't got a, a formal clinic as such, but um, it started really, I changed from one GP practice to another. And uh, the beauty of this GP practice is that we um, have book on the day appointments. So the patients call in on the day and then they, they book uh, the receptions book the patients and I can then triage my patients and work out how long to spend with each one that I think I, I need um, and that's how it all started really so I spent I made sure I had more time for um, the, the patients that I felt had complex needs or as, as, as you said Mark this heart sink feeling induced in us so to speak um, so I would make sure I do 20 minutes uh, and also just put a really good buffer around that 20 minutes and one to um, check myself, you know, afterwards, because sometimes it can be quite um, difficult and, and draining. Um, and also to make sure I've got an empathy check, as I call it, making sure I'm really in a good mood, um, really um, it being very um, sort of um, read the notes, made sure that I know what's going on and feeling really um ready to go so to speak and um, so that they're my they're my big things was the time and making sure you're in the right place for this consultation not rushed not stressed not got external yep. factors um so it, it, it's very informal the receptionists um are, are brilliant and they they know our patients well and um so they know that if they're getting um somebody who's, who's if they think that is is having complex needs or uh induces that heart sink feeling in them then they'll, they will put on my list um, as because that's how it just evolved, really. I, I saw the complex patients and, um, and I, I look out for um, particularly the um, people who um, have re repeat, um, did not attend, we call them DNAs. Um, yeah. And that's a real sort of alarm bell because to me, that's somebody who's really struggling, got really complex problems and, um, and possibly a chaotic lifestyle. And they're the people I want to see and they're the people I want to help as well as everybody else. But that's, they're the ones that really do need us rather than you, can't, you, you have to get off the list because you, 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 um, not, you know, you, you're not attending that they're the ones that actually do need our help. And, and I think we should be a little bit more open about that and, and help them really. Um, so that was the, that's the main thing. Um, the, if I was going to say, you know, how to give you some advice on, on, on what makes me, um, cons uh, help me consult with, with patients of that, uh, with complex needs. Um, I would say it's very much, um, I always call it walking alongside them. Um, and yeah. you can try and walk in their shoes as well. That's sort of, particularly, uh, we have quite a lot of asylum seekers. So it's, it, it's getting to know their backstory makes you realize, mm -hmm. you know, how, how awful it's been for them and, and, and what they've been through. But not only that, when they get to, to Manchester, everything else that goes on and it, it's, it's really sad for them, but it's so yeah. rewarding to work with them and walk alongside them, try and think about how it would feel to be on that journey that they've had. Um, and that really helps set the scene and helps yeah. set that doctor patient partnership, not a transaction at all, general practice or the consultation, it's a partnership. So yes, it sets that scene for you and that journey with them. And you start to get to know them. And not just time in the consultation, but time evolves, you know, the journey could be two to three years. Um, it's important to know their backstory, if they have a backstory, if they even know they've got a backstory, um, mm. if they want to share that with you and you develop that relationship. Um, as you go along. So there's, there's the importance of finding the story behind it, getting to know that patient. And uh, there's something about time here and, and the importance of allowing time. And I think uh, in, in our past discussions, you mentioned about time before and after. And certainly that, that message came over about the, the preparation. Um, 
So what, what do you think is the most important element of your scheme? Uh, I've mentioned time already, but there, are there any other things that you want to pick out? You talked about walking alongside. Um, yeah, I think I think the having the the ability to realise. So, so when we come out of training, I'm not sure how much um, uh, the trainees have exposure to our complex um, patients or our heart mm. feeling patients. Um, and it's, it, it, I think it's what I would suggest is is try and not feel overwhelmed by it. That's the big thing. Um, yeah do some training um, especially communication skills but also it's it's really important to remember those little sort of subtle signs where all together that 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 will be your heart sink feeling patient so how they make you feel but also all those little things like as i said the dnas the the um the chaos that and you know the um that there's lots of feelings you can get inside you sort of as i said um, um um, feeling frustrated, feeling um, a rubbish doctor <laughs> because you can't, you know, but you're not a rubbish doctor. You, it's just that that's the feeling that then they give you because they're probably feeling it too. So try and reflect on the feeling very much. Um, I think it, we talk, we got taught it in psychiatry, but very much though that that um, um, feelings that get put inside you and they're not your own feelings. Um, so recognize them and work with it and try and reflect back if it's safe to do. But just try and have that. Um, remember that this patient is not um, bothering you. This patient needs you. It needs yeah, somebody yeah. to sit back and listen and understand. And I often find it helpful to look back in the notes and you get a real pattern. And these notes could go on for years, you know. But yeah. if you get, if you read the notes, you start to get an understanding. And then that just puts a much better, even playing field for the consultation set your boundaries and then that patient gets a really good healthcare experience that that's what i think yeah so it's about prioritizing them rather than putting to one mm. side mm. and and that message about the gut feeling uh, really resonates with me you know when a patient comes in they're feeling anxious you start feeling anxious that's the clue you know if you're feeling angry that's probably because they're feeling angry um so yeah yeah okay well thank you very much indeed um and uh, we'll go on to hear from tim about the setup that he has but that will be in the next section so we look forward to seeing you in a moment thank you okay.